Hello there everybody, Murray Kreider here again. I've been thinking about the content of this video for a while and, and honestly it's a little bit going to be tough for some people. I'll be stepping on some people's toes here and I don't mean to. This is meant to be educational. I'm going to uh, illustrate a common problem or a mistake or a misunderstanding in the world of Japanese kitchen knives, in particular laminated, three layer laminate, also known as Sanmai, uh, I guess it would also apply to Gomai, uh, kitchen knives and outdoor knives for that matter. And I wanna identify a problem and then I wanna offer some solutions, some remedies on how to correct it. So quite often we see recently in knives on social media, Laminated knives, uh, one side might look somewhat like that, and the other side looks something like that. And the shaded areas here illustrates the core of the three-layer laminate. Now, sometimes the external laminate is, is Damascus or mild steel or stainless, it doesn't matter, but it's a, it's a laminate nonetheless, and a laminate is meant to support the core steel. Now, I wanna show you another illustration here quick so I get you on the right frame of mind. Everyone's familiar with the old fashioned wood pencil. Okay, what we got here is a little bit of the graphite, also known as the lead core showing so that you can write with it you can see all around it, equal amount of lead is exposed and it's well supported by the wood on the outside. This is a correct example. Now, this looks very similar. We've got the graphite or the lead core sticking out. We've got wood supporting it, but look at the other side. All of that lead is exposed because the wood has been ground too far up on the pencil. Now look at this other example. Okay, now you would just agree with me that that's just flat out ridiculous, that you can see just how much lead is exposed. Now what's gonna happen if you go to try to use this pencil? Everyone knows, right? The lead breaks off at an inopportune time. It's not supported adequately by the wood. So this is a good illustration for how laminated knives are meant to be. Now take a look at this example. Now, I don't normally, uh, I don't normally etch my stainless Fukugozai series knives, but I did this for your benefit. So you can see that 85, 90% of the laminate goes down to the edge of the knife. Only enough steel core is exposed for cutting performance and for a few repeated sharpenings. And you can see we have that nice balance on the other side as well. Now, if you want to get nitpicky, I've got a little bit more steel exposed here in the heel on the one side than the other side. But you get the drift. I'm not talking about how to do this perfectly, but I'm trying to help you avoid the big pitfalls like this and this, or like a blade that looks like that. So the remedy is first and foremost, when you're laminating your steel, make sure you're close to like one third, one third and one third your billet laminate. You can have some variations on, if you wanna go 30% in your court or 33, which would be about a third or 35% or even there's one guy out there who uses 40% and 30 and 30. That's fine, but just make sure that when you're laying it together, you do have equal amounts on both sides. The next thing is forge it thin, forge it really, really thin. Often this kind of grinding occurs because the blade was left too thick before it was ground. Grind it almost down to your final thickness. Here you can see here, you can see the final hammer blows right on the surface of the metal. So you know that the edge was uh, not much thicker than it currently is when it was forged. The other thing is, is be really careful that your blade is not twisted or that your blade might have a dip in it. When I look at my blade like this, I might see a dip in it somewhere in the middle, for example. That 
is exactly what causes things like that. So try to correct that before you start grinding. The other thing is, uh, sometimes the blades are cupped. So the, the blade can look straight on the spine and look straight on the edge, but there can be a cup in the blade. So it's really important to examine the blade like this, both ways, and you'll see if there's a cup in there or not. And a cup can lead to overexposure on one side. And the thing is, before you grind a blade that's got a cup in it, you, you can feel it. If you, if you feel the blade with your thumb and your, uh, your middle finger like that, you'll feel if it's cupped and try to take corrective action before that. And lastly, as you grind, as you start grinding and you start to see evidence of that core appearing, etch it with whatever acid you've got on hand so that you can clearly see the amount of steel being revealed. And start adjusting left side to right side according to what you're seeing with the etchant. Uh, and and if, if you start to see a trend like a whole bunch of steel being exposed in one spot, do your best to correct it. Now lastly, you know, if you make knives in any volume, uh, there's, I'm, I've got 31 knives in this batch uh, that I've done in the last 10 days. And so that's, that's quite a few knives. If you have a knife that's got a ridiculously amount of exposed steel core in it, you know, you should, I really think that ethically you should sell it as a second. It's not really what you intended and it's not really perfect. And so what you gotta be careful of is out there in the internet, there's guys who see pictures of knives like this and they go, radical lines, dude, I love it. It looks wild and crazy. And then people's egos are getting stoked for faulty work. And so I just think that we want to, we want to address this. And really what we're looking for is the fully supported steel core exposed just enough so it, uh, it'll cut properly and uh, be easy to maintain. Okay, well, if you have any thoughts or comments, feel free to uh, offer feedback. Like I said, this it's not a comfortable video to have to post, but I do see a lot of people in the Japanese kitchen knife world kind of getting off track with that. And I kind of want to, I want to help you guys get back on track and keep making excellent knives so that your customers will be satisfied for many years to come. This is Murray Carter with Carter Cutlery saying, keep that core centered and grind your knives well. Take care. Bye.